Jim, congratulations on the Working Families Boost you released last week. Uh, John Cherry from Good Start Early Learning here. Uh, I just had one question for you though. Will there be a complementary early childhood workforce strategy? We've got thousands of vacancies in our sector at the moment, thousands more needed in the next few years, and that's without needing to provide the places to support a huge increase in workforce participation. What's Labor got planned on the early childhood workforce to train more workers, make sure they're paid well and professionally recognised and supported, and delivering the quality early learning that Australia's children need? Well, John, it's definitely true that our policy will require more educators uh, over time. One of the reasons why we wanted to flag uh, in advance is this is that this is the direction that we want to be headed, uh, would be to signal to the sector uh, that they would need to be prepared for that. We've also, as you probably know, built into our policy a Productivity Commission uh, review about three years in, and part of that is to ensure that we've got the workforce that we need. We've also got uh, Jobs and Skills Australia, which is an initiative that we've announced, which is to try and make sure that all of our training and all of our labour market needs are filled, sufficient to um, you know, recognise and account for and fill uh, the opportunities that we hope to create uh, in early education. Uh, you raise pay of early educators, and obviously we've had uh, a lot to say about that uh, in the past. One of the reasons why we want the ACCC to look at the relationship between fees and wages and other aspects of the cost structure uh, of early education is because we want to properly understand uh, what's going on there. As you know, these are all really complex uh, issues, but they're crucial issues. If we're to do the right thing by families, and especially mums, uh, the right thing by our kids, and the right thing by our economy. Hi, Cassandra Winkler, Senior Economist at CEDA. My question for you is, how would you address the differing pace of economic recovery across the states right now? Well, Cassandra, I agree completely that this recovery is going to be really patchy and what we need to avoid at almost any cost is leaving Australians behind, leaving specific communities behind uh, as we do recover. Next year is going to feel like uh, a recession for a lot of people, even though it might look like a recovery on paper. Uh, that's why we need to get the JobKeeper uh, part of this part of it all right. We're worried that it's being withdrawn too quickly and that communities like Cairns, also in Melbourne and elsewhere in Australia, uh, aren't ready to have so much money pulled out of the local economy. That's really crucial. But going forward, we also need those place-based approaches. We need to work with local councils and with state governments to recognise uh, that our economy is really the sum total of many local economies and some will be faring badly for longer than we'd like. So we need to be considering those local jobs programs. Uh, we need to be considering um, you know, how we track and measure how individual communities uh, are faring as part of a much bigger effort of measuring what we really think matters in our economy. So there are some big opportunities there for place-based approaches for local jobs programs, but also for making sure that we're tailoring our support for the communities at risk of being left behind in this recession. Hi, I'm Tony Wren from Anti-Poverty Week. We're a diverse group of organisations and individuals who believe that poverty can be solved. We'd like to know what your policies and ideas are to reduce poverty in Australia, one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Well, in a first world, first rate country like Australia, poverty is obviously unacceptable, as is inequality, uh, as is social mobility. And we need to recognise that this recession hasn't just created poverty in our country, but it's accelerated it, it's exacerbated it, it's uh, reinforced some of the old uh, challenges that have worried us for some time around a, about a country where some people can get ahead, but many people are left behind. That's why it's absolutely crucial that we do something about the permanent rate uh, of job seeker. $40 a day was not good enough for people looking for work, too hard to support themselves, but also not good for an economy which desperately needs that spending power. We also need to make sure that we're putting a roof over people's heads, particularly the most vulnerable Australians, including women fleeing uh, domestic violence and other uh, situations like that. Uh, that's why we believe that there should have been room in a trillion dollars of debt to do something about social housing. Uh, social housing ticks a lot of boxes. It's good for jobs. It can happen quickly. It's good for local communities. But probably most importantly, it builds a lasting benefit for the most vulnerable people. So I think if we care 
about the level of poverty and inequality and social mobility in Australia as we should, as we must, then we need to recognise that job seeker and social housing are a big part of that puzzle. There are other issues as well, but let's deal with those two as a really pressing priority.